WHIP, Philly's number one college radio station. All right, that's us, Philly's number one college radio station, WHIP, 215-204-9449 is the number if you want to call and hang with us. We have an action-packed show for you today. We still have the Temple Football Coaches Show coming your way at 1130, but let's go out to the phone lines right now and welcome in a former New York football giant. He put up 10,449 yards in his career with 55 touchdowns, played 10 seasons with Big Blue, and the Eagles will travel to New York this Sunday to play the Giants, and that's Tiki Barber. Tiki, it's Zach Gelb and Chase Sr., WHIP Radio here in Philadelphia. Thanks a million. How are you? My pleasure. How are you guys doing? I'm doing great. Well, we're doing great. And actually, I got my start in radio. I was eight years old. I was a little boy going into the WFAN studios. And now your producer for TBD in the AM, Ray Martell, put me on the airwaves to debate your good friend Sid Rosenberg and Joe <laughs> Beningo. So how do you like working with Ray Martell? Because I know he is quite the character, to say the least. Well, first of all, you were warped at a young age then working with Sid Rosenberg. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's not a good uh, combination. Yeah, exactly. Now, the difference. Great, and they're both uh, really good friends of mine. Uh, down down in uh, South Florida, but Ray has, has been awesome. You know, he moved over from uh, WFAN where he was working with Francesa, and he brings just this unbelievable energy, uh, and, he, and he's tenacious getting guests for us. To this morning, we had Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and we had Rick Pitino, and we had Mike Trout. Uh, it, was, it, it makes it star-studded awesome. lineup right there. Yeah, well, exactly. When you have those kind of guests coming in and giving you insight, uh, and a lot of that is on Ray's shoulders, it makes it so much easier. Uh, to talk sports. Now, Tiki, everyone remembers your performance up against the Eagles back in 2002 that got you guys into the playoffs in that overtime game. You put up 203 yards. What do you remember from that day? Because that was one of the, the most unbelievable performances I've seen from a running back. Yeah, it was one of the ups and down, up and down performances of my career because not only did I have 200 yards, but on the flip side, I had three fumbles in that game. Uh, the thing that stands out, well, two things stand out. One, that normally, at that time at least, a reliable kicker, David Akers, missed a field goal at the end of regulation that allowed us to get into overtime. And uh, Coach Fossil came over to me on the sideline and he said, you know what, you've gotten us this far, I'm going to ride you all the way through. And so we got the first possession in overtime. I had I touched the ball on every single draw, every single play. We ultimately got in position to kick the winning field goal, and so it was an emotional day. Uh, obviously, it's one of the, the four times that I made the playoffs in my career, so it was meaningful. Uh, it was also one of the one of five where I rushed for 200 yards. It was lots of up and ups and downs, but that's sport, especially football. You had a fumbling problem, and you even mentioned it, and when Coach Coughlin came in, he kind of fixed that problem for you. David Wilson, he's a, a young running back. You even see Stephen Ridley out there in New England. How do you? Yep. What would you say to a young running back in this league when they come in and they fumble the ball a few times? It's the, the hardest thing to teach is ball security in the NFL because uh, the most important component of it is patience and, and awareness. And as a young player, you're, you're all – speed and you all, I need to make this big play, I need to force it to happen. But in actuality, and it took me a long time, as you alluded to, to, to fix this, uh, you, you have to understand what's happening in front of you. There's a dance that, that takes place between the offensive line as they pull or block or do or zone blocking schemes. That it has to happen before you can have a big play. Uh, and then secondly, you, you, you got to be aware of contact. As I got older, uh, and, I, and, I, and I counseled this to David Wilson uh, a few weeks ago when he fumbled those t- two times at the beginning of the season against the Dallas Cowboys, I should stop, stop thinking about the guy immediately in front of you, but try to get a snapshot of a defense, right, and what they're trying to do to you and where they're going to be as this play develops. And then you can anticipate when contact is coming. And when contact is coming, you got to wrap it up, no matter how you want to do it. I did it by having it high and tight, and grabbing my, uh, my ball hand with my off, my off, my off uh, wrist, uh, and, and I was able to, to curb a problem that was made me a liability. I think he'll do the same thing. He hasn't had an issue since that first game. Uh, but it's all about awareness. It's all about patience and all about understanding more than just trying to be physically dominant. 
Hey, Tiki, it's Jay Senior. Thanks for hopping on with us. I'm a Philadelphia local guy, and there's nothing like the Giants-Eagles rivalry. You can make the argument that it's a little bit more bitter than the Dallas-Eagles rivalry because the distance in between the two cities. But uh, can you just talk about your experiences with the Eagles during your career as a New York Giant and how bitter that rivalry is because uh, it's two desperate teams looking for a victory on Sunday. It could be a bloodbath. No, you're right, especially in a division where what that a lot of people are considering the worst in the National Football League, a, a, big, a big win uh, is, is paramount this weekend for both of these teams. But, uh, you know, this rivalry for me was meaningful because the Philadelphia Eagles in Giant Stadium was my first game of my career. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles down at the link was the last game of my career. Uh, so, and, and all of the, the, the interactions with you know the Brian Dawkinsons of the world and the Jeremiah Trotters and, 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 and Troy Vincents that I, I met on the, on the gridiron so many times have tons of meaning. Uh, I think there is a, a mutual love-hate relationship or love-respect or hate-respect relationship, I should, I should correct myself, uh, with me in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that rivalry was so much fun. You know, great coaches were, were in those battles, Andy Reid, uh, and Tom Coughlin and even Jim Fossil, uh, that, that, that makes it so intense. You know, I think for a stretch there, it was either the, the, the Giants or the Eagles were winning the division. Uh, and now you look at it, and the Cowboys have, have seemingly gained a little bit of an, an edge. But with that said, even the Giants at 0-4, they're only two games back. Right. Uh, so that makes this game um, particularly important for the Giants, but I think equally so for the Eagles, who have so much to prove in this first year under Chip Chen. Now, a lot of beef has risen over the last couple of years between LaShawn McCoy and O.C. Uminyura. He's obviously not on the team anymore, but LaShawn took a couple of shots at him yesterday saying it sucks that O.C. isn't there because he doesn't get a chance to to go up against O.C. and kind of juke him a little bit. Is there a a player that sticks out in your mind during your career as a a giant that you kind of had your eyes set on? No, of course. I mean, Trotter, Jim Wright Trotter, who I mentioned before. The Axe Man. Exactly. He was a nemesis. And Trotter was one of those who he knew me so well. He knew our scheme so well that he'd guess a lot. Um, You know, he'd he'd see a play developing and he'd beeline it to a hole uh, where he thought I was coming through that hole. And if he hit me, it it hurt. Uh, In fact, that that last season in 2006, the first I think it was the second game of the season we played down there. It was one of the, one of the reasons that I decided to retire is because Toronto beat the crap out of me uh, for 60 minutes. Um, but there were times where I'd get the best of him because I know he'd be running into that hole, and if I could beat him there or or, or, or get him off his game, uh, it was it was a big point waiting to happen. Uh, you know, at the end of my career, Brian Dawkins also came up to me. Uh, we we were walking off the field in defeat as Philadelphia moved on in that 2000. And, uh, six 2007 playoff series. Uh, he said, "We're we're going to miss you, man. You're one of the warriors, and it meant a lot." Uh, Jeffrey Lurie also came into that press conference, which kind of turned into my de facto retirement conference. I didn't have one after that, uh, and in the case as well. So there's this there's this respect that I have for that Phillies organization, even though I hated. It. How about hated that? <laughs> going down there, going down there to play. Tiki Barber joins us from TBD in the AM. Does a great job with BT and Dana Jacobson, uh, former New York football giant running back as the Giants will play the Philadelphia Eagles coming up on Sunday in New Jersey. And Tiki, uh, LaShawn McCoy, we mentioned Tim. He's off to a very impressive start. Uh, what do you yep. see out of this running back? Because he's just really fun to watch, especially the way he cuts on the field. No, he really is. And I've heard people make this comparison. He's our generation. Barry Sanders and how he changes direction. And uh, I, at the beginning of the season, I kind of had an idea uh, that I threw out, and some people accepted it, some people didn't. That he was going to lead the league in rushing. If we're looking at another 2,000-yard guy, it would be Lashawn McCoy if he stayed healthy, mainly because of what Chip Kelly is doing in offense and by speeding things up, by spreading it out, by creating voids in, in the first and second level of, of defenses, a guy like LaShawn McCoy, uh, can, it's, it's, it's like going to a buffet. I mean, it's, it's stealing in some ways. Uh, with that much room, with, with one or two guys to beat, he's most likely going to win every time. Uh, so it, it, it is fun to watch him run. It's, it's fun to see him get the ball in space. And, and despite some of the struggles of this Eagles team, I think offensively, if you, if you like the game, um, you know, and the, and the new nuances that are entering the game, uh, he and Michael Vick and, and what they're trying to do in Chip Kelly's offense is something that uh, it's definitely worth keeping an eye on.
Now, since that first half against Washington, the Eagles' offense has really struggled. And w- when they went up against the Skins, it just caught the football nation by storm because yeah. of the odd formations that they are running and some of the schematic things that we had never really seen before. Uh, I'm not sure if you've had an opportunity to see the Eagles game against the Chargers and yeah. against the Broncos and yeah. um, against the Chiefs too, but what, in your opinion, is the reason the Eagles are struggling right now because the offensive line is is a little weak and yeah. the receivers, other than Deshaun Jackson, aren't necessarily number two uh, wideouts? Well, and here it is, and they're not actually struggling ex- struggling except to score. When you look statistically at them, the number two offense in the league, they're mm-hmm. leading uh, the NFL in rushing by a wide margin. 40 yards per game is a big deal. There's some teams that aren't even rushing for 40 yards per game, right. uh, a la my New York Giants. Um, so they're, they're moving the ball, but the, the challenge becomes when you get into the red zone, that, that space that I was alluding to shrinks. And it's much easier to defend in that part of the field. And then what becomes necessary is that you become accurate and you become very, uh, you become very specific and deliberate on how you execute. And I think that's what's been holding back this Philadelphia Eagles offense is that in those red zones. We've seen a lot of drop passes. Uh, you know, Selleck had one a couple of weeks ago where, you know, it, it's, it's right there. You've got to make the play. Uh, results, you end up kicking a field goal instead. And when you're playing a team like the Denver Broncos, who seemingly are scoring at will, uh, you can't trade field goals uh, for touchdowns. Uh, to compound that, uh, uh, you know, as good as the Philadelphia Eagles offense yards-wide has been, their defense is, is the polar opposite. Literally, last team in the league, uh, they haven't been able to stop anyone. Uh, and until they're able to figure out that balance, offensively and defensively and special teams, look what's made the Kansas City Chiefs so good. Right? They can score on, you know, methodically on offense. They play great defense, uh, and they have a great returner in, uh, in uh, Dexter McCluster. So if you can get that balance all the way around, it makes all aspects uh, a little bit easier. And Philadelphia... I think the, the struggles on defense start to trickle over uh, to the offensive side of the ball. Both of these defenses have been bad, and Tuck came out the other day and pretty much said, because the Giants are getting a lot of heat in New York, and you know it better than anyone, and he pretty much said if anyone turns on Tom Coughlin, he'll be the first one to punch him in the face. Is Tom Coughlin, I know he won two Super Bowls, uh, defeating the Patriots, but is he on the hot seat? Are the fans growing tired in New York uh, with the no. football coach? Well, I, I think he gets a, a little bit of a pass this year because it's, it's quite uh, easy to see that there is a dearth of talent um, on both sides of the ball, defensively, and it's really in the core. Defensively, they've just lost the ability. I don't know if it's scheme-wise or, 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 or they've lost effectiveness to get pressure on, on the quarterback. Uh, offensively, they cannot protect Eli Manning, and as good as he has been, it's, the, the offense in New York has been predicated on five- to seven-step drops and making big plays downfield. Uh, you know, excusing the, the run game. And I think it's starting to come back to haunt the New York Giants. Uh, four years ago, three or four years ago, they started to get away from excelling at running the ball. And now that they're struggling, they don't have something to fall back on, uh, you know, to, to sustain a drive or to get that tough yardage. Uh, you end up in, uh, in passing situations more often than not. And when you can't protect the quarterback, it, it's damn near impossible uh, to throw the ball effectively. And both of these teams, they're struggling, and they need a win in the worst possible way. Uh, the Eagles, the only win of the season came up against the Redskins, and then the Giants are still looking for their first. And I know a good Giant football team better than anyone because I'm a Patriot yeah. fan, and I saw them <laughs> beat my, two, my team in the Super Bowl twice. And it just looks like both of these teams, the Eagles more on the defensive side of the ball and the Giants on the defensive side of the ball as well, just don't have that intensity. So as a player, when you lose a few games in a row, how do you build that intensity back up in practice? Well, it's, it's- it starts in practice. One, it starts with the mentality. You saw some of the uh, quotes from Andrew Roll this week and, and, and him challenging them. Because it, it, oftentimes it can't come from on high, meaning it can't come from the coaches saying, you know, yelling at you, screaming at you, we got to do this better and that better. Because when you're not successful, you tend to tune out. Uh, negative reinforcement, and, and you have to. It's a defense mechanism uh, that I think every human has. Um, uh, it's it's why you hear all these early childhood folks talking about when someone when a kid's doing something bad, try to positively reinforce them because they'll tune out the negative. The same thing happens in sports, uh, uh, and it also um, becomes uh, imperative for someone to just be an example um, to. 
to take it upon themselves to excel uh, in one way or another uh, that, 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 that gives something for everyone else to achieve, uh, try to achieve. And, and I think Antrell's trying to do that. I think Justin Chuck, Tuck is trying to do that. Uh, and without it, uh, you, you fall into this this sense of, of hopelessness, right? No matter what we do, we can't win. And if it ever gets to that point, then, then the season is lost. Tiki, I was uh, a little surprised as an Eagles fan when you announced your retirement. Your last season, you ran for over 1,600 yards, retired uh, in your early 30s. You certainly left the game on top of your career, but do you ever miss the game? I know you, you filed some paperwork to try to return back to the NFL and, and I think 2011, but... <laughs> that's, what, that's when I was bored and wasn't doing anything. <laughs> right. Um, I, don't, I don't actually miss the game. I miss the stage. Uh-huh. Uh, walking out onto you know, the Link or, or Giant Stadium, which is now MetLife Stadium, or, or any of these massive, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, arenas that we, uh, that we go in and, and beat ourselves up on. It's, it's, there's nothing like it. There's, there's no there's no form of, of excitement uh, that can be garnered by uh, other than playing playing a sport at the high, highest level and either being cheered or booed or or trying to achieve in front of an, an audience and so you miss that but the business of it I, I don't miss the, the 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 fatigue of it the attrition of it I, I don't miss uh, and as as I got older um, and stopped being able to recover. I knew that it was time for me to go in a different route, and, and uh, you know, fortunately, I've landed on my feet doing some really fun things these days. Final one here right before we let Tiki Barber go. I know you do some great work uh, with Thuzio. Can you just tell us a little bit more about that? Because I checked it out for the first time today online because you guys follow me on Twitter, and it's yep. some really cool stuff that you guys are doing. Yeah, no, I appreciate you bringing it up. Thuzio is a company, Thuzio.com, is a company that I founded uh, about two years ago. We've been operational for about a year to enable athletes uh, or, and other professionals uh, to book things with their fans and corporations. Uh, so if you wanted to have an athlete come to your uh, birthday party or bar mitzvah or you wanted an athlete to give a corporate speaking event or go to lunch or dinner or play a flag football game, currently it's, it's very difficult to find a representative booking for you. And then you're kind of dealing with a monopolist because he can charge whatever he wants. What we, did, what we did was create a marketplace for these type of transactions to take place with price transparency. So you know exactly what you're paying for uh, when you try to book uh, uh, Brian Dawkins uh, to come do something or, or, or Rondé Barber to go play a round of golf. Uh, and and they're uh, uh, easily accessible in an e-commerce uh, environment. Uh, so we've, we've done all this. We've created a website. It's Duzio.com. All of our talent have profile pages with things that they're willing to do. And uh, we're having fun. We're growing quickly. We're up to 50, uh, about 1,400 athletes. In the end of the month, we'll be up to 1,500 athletes all across the country. Uh, and it's really exciting. Does your agent, Mark Lepselter, can you give me a birthday video message? Without a doubt, Mark Lepselter. <laughs> yeah. You know, Mark, Mark's the man, dude. Yeah, <laughs> he, I've run into Mark a few times a down at Radio Row. Yeah, he helped us a lot. Uh, you know, finding talent, and uh, you know, because we, we think we know these guys, and you, you call up, you know, the Giants, or you call up an old number, and it's like I don't know what Roger Hampton is these days. Uh, so tracking these guys down was 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 a, was a big a uh, uh, big challenge. But once we got them, it started to grow, and, and we hope it just keeps big, keep getting bigger and bigger. Well, Tiki, we really appreciate a few minutes today. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Let's talk to you again real soon as the season continues to go forward. Most certainly, guys. Take care. Thanks, Tiki. Tiki Barber right there, former New York football giant, 215-204-9449 is our number. we got to take a quick break. When we get back, it's a Temple University football coaches show. Gelbin Chase, main event, back after this.